Good afternoon. Welcome to our CAMP leader meeting for our for our CAMP CSA resident camps. I'm Chris Harold. I'm the director for our council. And I'm excited to be in that spot. I'm going to stand right here so everybody who's listening at home can hear as well. Um, our meeting today um, will cover two chunks. And before I before I get into the mechanics of it, I just wanted to share that that how much I appreciate you and the work that you do to bring your scouts to camp each summer. And if this is your first summer, anybody? And if this is your 25th summer? Yeah. 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 Um, either way, it's it's just so vital to what scouting is about. It's where where the magic happens so much is at camp. And not that it doesn't happen all year long, it surely does, but then you get to apply it in a grand way, on a grand scale at camp. Um, so thank you. Um, couldn't do it. I think, as far as I know, the only organization that just runs entirely on, under its own, that the kids come with their leaders to camp is through, through scouting. There we go. Today, we have two chunks of, you get two meetings for the price of one. Uh, the first part of the meeting is more the things that apply to every camp throughout the council, and that's the part that that I'm responsible for. Um, any, any of the kind of nuts and bolts of your medicals, your rosters, all, all these kind of fees, any of that kind of stuff will be right here. And then the second part will be the camp specific. So if we can keep our questions structured similarly, it would be a big help because if you want to know what time the 12 o'clock horsemanship class is at Camp Baldwin, I can't tell you that, I don't know. <laughs> um, but that's, that, that would be very helpful to, to do the camp specific ones in the camp meetings and then the ones for everybody in here. But we, we definitely wanna make sure all your questions get answered. So in this section, these are the things that we'll be covering. Why do we do camp? Fees and refunds, you can read. <laughs> and then materials. Any of the materials that I refer to today are available on the website. And even this meeting will be available on the website if you have other leaders who feel like it would be important that they see it um, or hear it or a chunk of it is important that you share with them. That will be, it'll be on our website here, uh, hopefully in the next few days. Um, so CPC DSA back, back, well, you can see the website right there. <laughs> and, and that's where you get most of it. Um, and then any, questions, any questions at all can go to 492.camping. Um, that, that email address is good. That there, you'll also receive each camp's individual email address. Again, camp specific questions um, are best focused there. So one would be more for like fees and well, the stuff we're talking about now. And the other would be more for what time is a 12 o'clock horsemanship class. I love the way we do camp in scouting. I love, love, love it. Um, it partly because I, I came out of education about a year ago back to scouting, professional scouting. And what I noticed anew in scouting is how doggone age appropriate our programming is. It's, it's, um, it's adventure that's got variety throughout the many years of camp, yet it has the continuity of scouting's values of leadership, of going through with your friends, of all these different things. Even if you pick up and leave town and go to a, move to a different town, you've got that common thread of scouting looks like scouting pretty much wherever you go, even including worldwide. There's some certain there's some differences and changes as the organization has grown and developed, but it's a continuity that is very conducive to child development. Um, and, and that's incredible. So. When a child goes to Camp Clark for their Weeblos year, they're getting equipped for their next year. When they're going through the trail of the first class in their first year at Scouts PSA camp, they're getting equipped for, the, for what comes next. And then when they get older, even if they get to the point where, oh, I've been there, I've done that, I've been to all of our 27 camps. We don't have 27, but I've been to all of our camps. I've been there, I've done that. They can still serve on staff. In fact, we are looking for staff members still. If you know of anybody who's 14 or older, um, there's a website that will pop up here in a moment 
um, well, it's the same way. It's all on the same website. It's all, uh, but we, I strongly encourage you to, if you've got youth who are sitting at home because they feel like they've been there, done that, then they're ready to teach everybody else when they're coming. And they're ready to be on staff. So we plan year by year what all our camps do. We have also the unique blessing here of having three Scouts PSA camps, not to mention the two Cub resident camps, not to mention all of the day camps that we've got. Very few councils have that kind of blessing. Not, not to mention the fact that they're all in different unique geographies and uh, the natural beauty in each one. You don't find councils like that. And so we appreciate you utilizing them all because as they get used, that continues to pay for them. <laughs> and, and we get to keep those lovely gems that we've got scattered throughout Northwestern Oregon. Um, when you go to camp, you get to see scouting in action too. Hopefully when your scouts arrive at camp, they're seeing what walks off the pages of the handbook in the staff. They're seeing role models. They're seeing people that they aspire to be because I've learned that they don't want to be you and I. They want to be staff members. They want to be the, the older teams. They want that's who they're aspiring to be. And hopefully we're giving them some really great role models to look up to um, when they come to camp. And we, parents, leaders, we get to have fun too when we're at camp. And if you're not, See somebody about that because <laughs> there's opportunity for that. Um, year round, uh, your troop is is working to develop all the same things, and this everything that happens at camp reinforces what you're doing on a year round basis. It's we're talking the same language when you show up at camp as you are in your troop meetings. Please stop me at any time if you have questions. I haven't got two nuts and bolts yet. But it's coming. <laughs> um, when you pay for summer camp, you're paying for the whole year of camp operation, really. Um, that it covers the facility, the staffing, the, the uh, of course, the food, <laughs> the, the uh, maintenance of the facility, all these sorts of things. Now, other people contribute as well um, through donations and through um, other users of our camps, but the mainstay of the funding for our camps is that summer program. Um, we've had some deadlines come and go already. May 1st, we had the free t-shirt deadline. Um, if you got your fees paid in full, your youth fees paid in full by that May 1st, you received an email that said, here's how many free t-shirts you get. Um, and it had a coupon code on there. You get, you have, until June 9th to go on to that website, and I think that website's coming up in a slide or two, um, go to, to go to that website and to order those shirts, and they will show up at camp in a nice package for you, all prepackaged. No, no, uh, no, showing up at camp without, having not done that, I think you lose the opportunity to get those shirts. So make sure if you've got those free shirts, if you get them ordered and they're sitting there waiting for you. Um, let's see. The big, the big deadline left to go is finishing, finishing any payments and, and getting paid in full before you leave town to head to camp. Um, we want every scout who wants to go to camp to be at camp. If there's a last minute add-on, it is not going to be a problem. Just be very clear about that. But any of our books that we do at camp are more challenging than books we do back in town um, because all the information in town is live and current and instant and all the information at camp is even a few days old. So we ask that you have all your fees paid two weeks prior and we put the little bit of a hammer in there that if they're not paid two weeks ahead of time, that that you don't get a, re after that two week window goes away, you don't get a refund on those. Um, so if there's a last minute two week cancellation, there's not a refund available, unless somebody's died, somebody's deathly ill, those sorts of things. Or somebody had a, we gotta pick up the family and move out of town and spit out. Yeah. Youth fees. Well, Am I referring to youth and adult, Jim, on, on refunds that youth and adult, or is it just youth? Youth? Thank you. Right. Um, and if you, if you do have to drop your numbers, sooner is better, for sure. If you have to drop your numbers, sooner is better, because 
we're, we're planning, we've been planning since before camp ended last year, but we continue to plan for how many staff do we need in what areas for what purpose. Um, so drop them now and, um, and there you go. There's that adult fees question that's um, up on the screen now. Um, you can pay them before camp or at camp. Any fees that you paid ahead of time are just to your advantage. There's less hassle when you show up on the first day. Um, it, 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 the process can be, is everybody here who you said was coming? Yes. Did you pay for all of them? Yes. Great. Have a great week. <laughs> that's, that's what we're striving for, the, the, what do you, the drive through quick window of check-in is what we're hoping for. Um, and it's, I mean, it's okay if it's not all dialed in, and, but it's just easier for you and everybody if that's the case. Um, well, these are fully refundable. You can add right up until the time you show up at camp. Um, and I would just encourage you, if you've got kids who are not coming to camp for any reason at whatsoever, to continue to encourage them to come, um, specifically because, um, well, let me put it differently. Um, we want, if there's obstacles in a kid's life that is, make, um, is making them not able to come to camp, please start a dialogue with us. Even if they've applied for a campership and have been turned down, please start a dialogue. We want every kid to come to camp. We want that um, in a big way. So and sometimes it's just a matter of understanding what are the circumstances. Um, and if they hadn't applied for a campership yet, there are still camperships available, even if they've missed the deadline for that. And if you have visitors, and we encourage visitors through the week, just make sure that please that they're paying for their guest meals and either the training post or office. So it, for refunds, if you've just simply paid way too much money, we're happy to give you your money back. If you have said you're bringing 27 kids and you really bring three, that's a different issue. Um, you, we we um, we're, again, we're planning on how many kids you, you've been telling us you're bringing, and I know some of it's a guess because you're saying, "Well, so many weeblos are going to cross over," and, but dial it in as quick and as as early as you can about how many are coming, and you'll save yourself money and hassle. I mentioned the extreme circumstances down at the bottom of this slide. If there has been a death in the family or the illness of the scout. Uh, and or the family moved out of the council at the last minute, that sort of thing, we can arrange a refund. More refund stuff. Um, most of, if you're, if the two week window is gone and then when you show up at camp, that's when we'll do the refund paperwork. We give ourselves a wide window of refund checks being mailed out by October, um, which is which is long. We're trying to under promise and over deliver on that front, and we think we found a way to do that. That's our hope. Um, that said, there are um, I don't remember how many hundreds, eight hundred some odd units between the Cub Packs and the Scouts PSA troops, all coming in with different arrangements and different kids, and the numbers going up and down all summer. So to sort it out and make sure we get it right, we give ourselves a wide berth. It's better to do it once and do it right. Those will go, any refunds would go to the camp committee, the, I'm sorry, the troop committee chair. And they would get made out to the troop. Um, we have had a few calls come into the office from individual families saying, well, my child's not going to camp and he's sending my money back. And we can't, we <laughs> need to send it to the troop, not to the individual family. What I didn't mention about um, changing the numbers of, of who's coming to camp is that you can do that in Tentaroo online, or you can do it by sending us an email, or you can do it by calling the office. Any of those three ways, um, we'll make the change. Um, the camp rosters are important for a multitude of reasons. It's when the fire comes over the hill, we want to know who we need to have accounted for. Um, for sure, it's an emergency procedure, at least. Um, in addition, the state of Oregon says you must do it. Um, and our Boy Scout national standards say we must do it. So it's just mostly a matter of knowing who is there. Who do we need to account for? Um, Tentaroo is our process for creating them. And that's for Scouts PSA camp. 
when you log into your BSA, sorry, your Tenpu account, that's where you get the option to create your roster. Your most recent, I think it's within the last month that your membership, your troops membership has been downloaded from the national website to Tenteru. So it should be up to date as of about a month ago of everybody who was registered with your troop. Um, I think there's provision for adding new scouts in there as well. And there is a tutorial of how to create a roster on, on the uh, website as well. Um, so you can create your roster ahead of time. Um, that gets you into signing up for classes and all those sorts of things, because you have to be on the Tenteru roster to sign up for classes, <laughs> um, at least before you come to camp. You do. We do have a paper roster available. That's the roster of last resort, nothing at all worth it. We showed up at camp and, oh my gosh, we missed that step. That's, so paper is, paper is the roster of last resort. Um, we're taking care of those online. And the website to go to for the tutorials is right there. Campsite assignments. Um, one note about, well, carry on to the next thing, if you would, please. Not much to say about campsite assignments, except for you'll be put together in a group in a campsite that you'll travel around with. with a import, one of the importances of filling out that online roster is it tells us how many kids of what rank are coming so that we can slot them for their activities that are age appropriate. Because if you're a wolf coming to camp, you're going to have some different activities than a bear, et cetera. Medical forms are a pretty straightforward thing. If you are going to a one of our three-day camps, well, that would be either the end of the season at Camp Clark, where it's a three-day camp, or throughout the season at Butte Creek, you need Part A and Part B of the medical form and do not need the physician's signature on that. And that's true for youth and for adults, both. But anybody who's staying 72 hours or longer, even if they're not all at the same time, like if they came early in the week and they came back later and they were there for a total of 73 hours, they would then need the the uh, physician's signature and part C of the medical form. And those medicals are good for one full calendar year. If you happen to have um, had your medical on July 5th of last year, that would be like the day after the 4th of July, so you'd probably still be enjoying the holiday. But, <laughs> but if you had your medical on July 5th, it's good to go all the way to the end of July this year. Okay, so it carries through the end of that calendar month when you had it. Um, and even if the week falls in the, if the time, your time at camp falls in the middle of the week, you're at the last week of July, first week part of August, then you'd still need to get a new, a new one uh, for that. Don't send them to the council office, please, because the camps need them there. Um, Photocopies are always nice, so you've got a copy for other scouting events that you have. And then um, some of the, some, well, not so much for the, so that's the main reason. <laughs> There's a fillable PDF online on our website that you can do most of the information, all the information in the case of the three-day camps. You can fill it, print it, and sign it. Again, at camp downloads, or, yeah. Yeah. So at the end of the camp, are you returning the medical forms to the packs and troops? Yes. So, photocopy. What would you use the photocopy for while you're here? Yeah, if there's some, if you have to go to town with the child, if you have to, uh, it, it's that sort of thing. I think it may apply a little bit more to to our Scouts BSA camps because they have activities that are off-site, that kind of thing. Oh, they may need a second, second copy to go with them, those sorts of things. Melissa. So the other. Um, at the end of your time at camp, you do receive a packet back that typically has things like the patches for each of the kids and the, and the medical forms and those sorts of things. Medication goes right along with medical forms, trying to keep kids safe and make sure their medicine is dispensed correctly. Um, so <coughs> for our cub camps, medicine is stored in the health lodge, but the adult leader goes with the youth up to the health lodge when it's, and tracks when it's time to get that med medication. There's a log that has to be taken of any time medicine is administered um, to our kids while they're in our care. Um, and these two come from a, a lot of state rules. Um, 
scouts have have additional rules that go along with that, but it's it's essentially just trying to keep track of medicine and not have it willy nilly all over camp. All right. Uh, the tricky part of it, it has sometimes you'll get like a pill container. Here's Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays. You can't do that. We have to have the original container with the prescription and the name of the person who's to receive it. Um, that's a common point of slip up that we really need to be attentive to. If you if you are one of the leaders and you need medicine and and you could you could keep it in the health watch, but we also have locked containers that you can lock to a thing in your in your campsite and take it on your schedule. Some medicines require refrigeration, and we are fully equipped to make sure that is refrigerated. And then tracking the medications and the times is important to, to making sure people get them when they're supposed to get them. <laughs> what not to do? <laughs> nice, good job. I don't think these were taken as pictures from our camps, but they're spectacularly colorful. And you have to put pictures in a PowerPoint. It's a rule. <laughs> uh, youth protection, keeping kids safe. I mean, anything we do in scouting doesn't matter so much if we don't keep them safe in some form or fashion. Um, our youth protection rules are, are pretty darn clear. Um, each, each unit must have two adult leaders of 21 years or, or older. Um, and And let's see. Well, essentially, just exactly what it says here, they must have the youth protection training. They've got to be, they've got to, so, so that leader who registers the day before camp starts, their background, their background check won't be complete, and so they won't be finished and ready to start yet. Um, PACs who would be coming from out of council, there's only a few, but it's important to, to note that we need proof of the, from myscouting.org of your youth protection training and that it's current. And I say that mostly for those out of council people who may be listening online. So, question about that. Sure. So, are all of our leaders are trained. Do you have, do we have to bring a piece of paper proving it, or is it just going to be in the site and you're going to we registered online and you know that that's the with the youth protection training? Right. Um, Camp director, you want to clear? Yeah. It's, um, it's on our list if they're registered. Okay, so we don't have to bring a copy of the certificate you get or anything. Only if only if you. Yeah, only if it's last minute, like you took the training and you have the, certi the certification, but it's not in the system. Um, so you may want, like within a week at camp, let's say, I would bring your, your certificate with you, just for that purpose. Otherwise, it should be on our... On our okay. Can you talk a little bit about adults beyond the two leader minimum? Because we, I think for Clark, everyone has to be registered adult leader. And then I don't know what the policy is for Greek. Yeah, if they're, if they're staying more than that 72 hours, they all must be okay, so registered so leaders. So Greek, we just need two registered adult leaders, and if a third parent comes, right, whatever, as soon as they pay them. And another question that has come up over time is that, well, a lot, a lot of times it'll be like just like two or three kids, and then having a hard time finding another leader for those two or three kids. And, and should that come up, we will work with you at camp to, because there's a lot of leaders in camp, the trick is, there's a lot of registered leaders in camp, the trick is when you combine this pack and that pack, who each have one registered adult leader, they each have to know that they're watching out for each other's kids and they are the second. It's, it's not something we like to advertise or put out there a lot. We prefer that we just have the two adult leaders because the kids know them and that sort of thing. But we also would prefer that kids are able to go to camp Todd, quick correction, uh, collection on here. Is all adult leaders at camp have to have youth protection training? It is, it's, it's, it's recommended that all adults yeah. in camp, it's recommended that all adults complete this youth, youth protection. All registered adult leaders must have yeah. complete youth protection training in the last few years. Yeah. And there have been a few changes in this over the last uh, years about age of the leaders and, and who needs the training and all that sort of thing. Yeah. But you can have, okay, as long as you, you we're going to have like nine adults going to be great. So we're going to have plenty of, and they're leaders. So yeah. they're, um, most of them are leaders and they're registered. Um, we have one parent right now who's not registered who's going to be going. So is that, do they That's all have. That's going to be a problem at Butte Creek. Okay. You would just need YPT. 
I would recommend, yeah. not required, but yeah. I would recommend well, all <laughs> years. We're, yeah, we're right. telling all yeah. adults. Yeah. Most, most and, pastors, and you know what? And that's not too much to ask the parent. No. Yeah. So, and just to be clear, you have to have two adult registered at um, every activity, right? And if you are taking a, a female participant, you need one registered adult to be a female. So in this day and age, registering moms as community members is going to have to be our new world, right? For I mean, us, most of our registered adults are. Our female anyway. But I mean, in general, <laughs> make, making sure that you've got ample in that, I mean, as we move forward, because it's, it, it is a special thing. You can have two women and adult leaders and five boys, it doesn't matter, right? But because of that, it, you need to make sure that every woman, especially in the Cub Scout pack, that is okay with registering that. Okay. Uh, um. We'll do our part to help maintain these youth protection standards. The camp shower houses, of course, are separated by age and by gender. That may look a little different from one week to the next week, because one week we may have way more females, and we have to put females in a shower area big enough for them. <laughs> right, so it, it just depends. Um, we may change to meet the need, but we'll, we'll, we'll make sure it's separated and posted and all those sorts of things. Sleeping areas, same way. And you have to be within three years of the person you're sharing a cabin we I think we covered the 72 hour rule and of course the one-on-one -on -one contact between adult leaders and youth members except for your own child is is prohibited inside and outside of scouting and we talked about what if your unit is struggling to get there let us know as soon as possible our camp directors are good at, at matchmaking with different units who are having the same challenges All right. Um, a couple, a couple notes. Sometimes parents go on vacation when their child is at camp, and there have been times where that child has gotten sick or needed to go home or something like that, and they didn't leave any kind of information about where to find the parents. They really, really wanted to be gone on vacation. That's not nice if you're the adult leader. <laughs> That's not nice. Insist that they're going on vacation, that you know where they're going, how you can reach them, who's going to take care of them when their child comes home and early from camp by some unfortunate happenstance. Um, that's important that, that you gather that information. Um, having a sort of a phone tree for both emergencies and non-emergencies. You could have someone at camp who's designated to start that phone tree to say the cool stuff that's happening at camp um, as well. Um, so that's a, that's a good way for quick communication. Uh, cell phone co coverage in all our camps is spotty at best. It's a, <laughs> it's a good time a good time for a vacation. Clark probably has the best, and your camp directors will know exactly where to go to find the good coverage. Um, though I wouldn't necessarily try to, if I had to get some work done while I was at camp, I wouldn't try to do that in, in the camps. And the camp directors also tend to know where in the area is a good uh, uh, co internet coffee cafe place um, to go to um, with decent um, Wi-Fi. Um, if, if there's an emergency at home that the scout or the adults at camp need to know about, we really want those to be communicated through the council office. Um, partly because if it's one of the kids, picture this, you don't want the kid to get a call or something like that, right? If they're not, you you want to be able to pick up the pieces when they fall apart. Um, you want to be there for them and know what in the world is going on or not why Johnny or Susie went over the hill by themselves because they were distraught over something that happened. Um, and that's for just the emergency, that's the emergency emergencies. Um, and there is an after hours answering service and um, as well, they will connect they will connect with the camps as needed. We mentioned that visitors are welcome in our camps, day visitors. That, um, and so that last day at dinner time is the best time. It's nice to know a little bit ahead of time if it, the whole pack and 30 parents are going to come up because that's a lot of extra meals that we weren't necessarily planning on. So if you're, if you're going to have that sort of a celebration with camp, um, um, let us know ahead. And then we talked about there's a fee for the meals, and you pay for those in the trading post from the office. Everybody who shows up at camp needs to check in at the camp office or when they leave camp. Um, 
just so, again, so we know when the fire comes over the hill, where everybody is, who we are missing or who we're not. Um, and again, I don't think we've had smoke in the area, but no fires coming over the hill in camp for a long time. <laughs> All right. What else? And that's for everybody, really everybody, everybody. Um, there you go. It could be that there's a parent who comes out camp to pick up their child and they are not authorized, or another relative who comes up to pick up the child and they are not authorized. They won't be allowed to do that. Um, if there's anybody who's not authorized to pick up a child, that should for sure, for sure show up on the medical form um, because that's something we need to be a partner with, with parents when there's, when there's those issues that come up in families. Training post. Um, if you if you're packed, paid, and full for everybody coming, for all the kids coming, you received. You should have. Re we're presuming at this point that you have received an email coupon code for that. If it was by May May fifteenth, was it or May first? May first. It was by May first, and you should have received that coupon code. And you can go on to the little store online, which is here. And you can use your coupon code and get all the free shirts you're entitled to, which will be in a nice, neat little package at camp when you arrive, if you order them online. If you don't order them online, you're taking a chance that all everybody else in camp is going to run to the store and buy your shirts. <laughs> and then we'll have to reorder and send them to you after camp. So order them online. Um, there's lots of shirts at camp. You'll have the opportunity. But the camp shirts that we purchased specifically for those who paid, um, paid with that early March 1 deadline, those it's it's a good idea to order those online ahead of time and they'll come prepackaged for you. So the pack's that, name. It's, it's a good idea because the this incentive expires June 9th. That's the other piece, right? Right. So if, you, if your coupon is no longer valid after June 9th, you still get the shirts, right? You can still pick them up at camp if you order them. Oh yeah. Then you're done. The, the coupon codes are not valid after June 9th. Yeah. What does the coupon code do? It allows you to get you the free shirts that you're due so if you order on it. You don't do it by June 9th. You have to so if you're All right, guys, so um, thank you for coming to uh, to the meeting tonight. I know it's running a little late, and we apologize for that, but appreciate your patience. Um, my name is Melissa Miller. I'm the camp director out of Butte Creek this year. I'm Maggie Poole. I'm going to be the business manager this year. Um, we have some very exciting things planned for you guys this year. Um, so we're bringing back um, a lot of old school things, but we're also going to keep some new that uh, that changed last year. Um, so we're very, very excited, and we'll go over some of those changes. Um, but first, Maggie is going to talk to you guys about pre-camp and check-in. Yeah, so my job is all like the super boring stuff that isn't too fun, like paperwork and spreadsheets. Um, so just a, we already went over a lot of stuff that y'all are going to need before you get to camp. So that's going to be um, the special needs form, which um, Melissa has extra paper copies of. Um, we need to get that in like yesterday because we want to be able to provide you guys with the best experience. And in order to do that, we need to know ahead of time um, what accommodations need to be made. Um, we also then want all of your papers payments to be made in full before you get to camp um, as much as possible. That makes it easier on you guys. It makes it easier on us. So everyone's having a better time all around. Um, and we'll quick touch on med forms. Yep, everyone needs to have their med forms. Sorry, short for that. Um, parts A and B, um, like we said, the emergency contacts need to be correct. And um, we need to make sure you list out all of your allergies. Um, I know it's easy to sometimes like leave some things off and 
Um, we need to make sure that we know everything so if something does happen, we can respond accordingly. We also need to know about if you have an EpiPen or an inhaler. Um, so when you do your med check-in, you make sure that those are known. So, boring stuff that we already covered. Um, yeah, let's talk about when we first get to camp. Um, so, the first thing you're going to have to be doing when you get there is you're going to be parking. Um, we are going to be parking in a horseshoe shape. You're going to be backing in. So, if there is an emergency or we do have to have an evacuation, super easy to get out of there really quick. Um, we're also going to have staff members out there. Please listen to what our staff members are telling you. Um, don't park anywhere unless the, staff, unless the staff member tells you to do that. Um, it's going to make the process a whole lot easier for us and you guys. So everyone's going to be a lot happier. Um, sweet. And then, so any questions about any of those things? It says no later than 1 p.m. Uh, to arrive. What's the earliest that more people are? Um, I believe so. It's 12:30 mm -hmm. is when we're going to start the check-in process. Yeah. So, um, if you want to arrive at noon, you can, um, but just know that we will not be ready for you until 1230. Right. Yes. And then they, they said for the short camps like this, we don't need to do the right? So, you're going to need um, parts A and B. So, it's yeah. oh, it's so it doesn't have to be like the, you don't have to like go get the physical on it, right? So, it's just like the real quick, easy fill out, so something. That. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Do we have a special needs one here? Yes, we do. So we can get those to you. Awesome. So initial arrival. We're all good? Or is that a hand raise for a special needs form? All right, cool. Um, so now let's go into the actual check-in process. So you're going to get there. You're going to park your car and everything. Um, we are going to be having, so we're continuing um, the super fun tradition of, you know, walking up your... Um, stuff to your campsites. Just kidding, we're using the tractor again this year, so don't worry. Um, yeah. Um, that's, one, that's one thing we're not going to get rid of. Yeah, no, we, that's a good one. Um, so yeah, so you guys are all going to mark all of your luggage. Um, we're going to have luggage tags for you, and it's going to get taken up to the campsite where it needs to go to. Um, so after that, you're going to walk over to the med shack, um, and you're going to be checking in as a complete pack, which is going to be super important. It's going to make it easier on you guys and on us. We're trying to streamline things as possible. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. We yeah. will have you yeah. accommodated. Yeah. Don't worry. Yeah. We'll, we will work with you as much as you need. You'll just be yeah, coming to be like that. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> End of the summer. So. <laughs> 14 kids, I think most of them. <laughs> yeah, it just makes it easier to like wrangle everything and make sure we have everything that we need so you guys are all set to have a good time. Um, so then after you go to the Met Shack, you will come and say hi to me. Um, well, you will be getting your super fun camp shirts. Yay! Um, and then there you will also be getting your homestead assignment and also your itineraries for, uh, for the week. So that will be super fun. And after that, you're going to go down to the campfire bowl. We're going to have refreshments. We're going to have the staff down there um, singing songs, playing games. So it'll just be kind of a, a fun time when we wait to get started. Awesome. Yeah. All right. So some, um, so like we said, there's going to be uh, some new and some old. Um, so how many of you remember Cosmic Cowboy or the McNasties? No, they're coming back. <laughs> so, um, so it's funny because over the last few years we've had people, they haven't been there for five or six years, maybe even longer. Um, so that's something that a lot of people have wanted to have come back. It was a lot of fun for the scouts. Um, so they're going to be coming back, making a return. Yes? Um, so Cosmic Cowboy is kind of like the good cowboy, right? Um, the hero. <laughs> um, and then the McNasties, of course, are the bad guys. And they try to go around and, um, you know, and take things from the scouts and do all the things that are not good in scouts. And then Cosmic Cowboy makes it better. So, yeah, it's going to be pretty awesome. We're excited. <laughs> um, another, um, another thing that we are doing this year um, that is new is we are going to do a Weeblos Outbound. So if you have Weeblos that are coming to camp... Um, they're actually going to have an outbound this year. Um, so it's going to be on day two. Um, and what's going to happen is after lunch, they will take off on a six-hour 
track outbound, right? So they're going to go out, and the stations that would be covered normally for them going station to station to station, um, we're going to have out and away for them so that they can um, experience what it was like to be a cowboy, right? And live um, live in the old Western days, and um, they're going to be eating supper out. Um, they're going to be cooking their own supper, and um, and having a really fun time. So we're really excited about that. They will be back in time for our street show, uh, which happens about 7.15, so they should be back about 7. Um, and then the optional part for you guys um, that we really highly encourage you to allow your Weeblos to participate in is we are going to do an overnight for them. So, um, so after supper, they will, um, we will have a place for you guys to put sleeping bags, um, and they're going to sleep under the stars. Okay, we're going to have enough female and male leaders uh, to cover your scouts, so you do not have to worry about that. Um, and we will do astronomy. Um, they will also have a campfire, um, sing some songs, have some s'mores um, or marshmallows and that kind of thing. So it's going to be a really awesome experience for them. Yes. Um, I had a couple ones. For that, if there's a burn ban going on, how is that? They obviously probably will build new campfires. Right. So they may not have a campfire, but we would still do the overnight, and we would still have some kind of treat for them. Okay. And how would that work when if they're out for six hours, if any of them need medication? We'll have everything to them. Okay. Yep. So if they have medication they need to take, we'll make sure that they get it. Oh, and that's for first and second year rules? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So the adults are not going on that. It's just the kids. You can if you have enough leaders, you're more than welcome to. Absolutely. Because we have some adults that have Weeblos and younger scouts all going together. Okay. So if they want to stay with the younger scouts, they can absolutely stay with the younger scouts. Um, and we will make sure that that they are well taken care of. Yep. But at this age, you're so encouraging parents being around the kids. Yeah, yeah. for sure. We're just at the Weeblos age. You know, we are um, we are also trying to get them ready for Scouts right. BSA, right? So uh, we want them to have a little bit of independence um, and try to get them used to. Um, you know, this is just kind of one night, and um, where when they go to camp with their with their troops. Um, it's usually a five to six or seven day camp, so um, so it's just kind of a little introduction to being out with a you know with an, a group of scouts where um, where they can uh, be scouts and and have fun and um, and try to uh, try to not have the leaders and parents there um, and allow the parents to enjoy a night as well. So you don't, you know, so you don't have to have to do that. So. You said this is the evening of the second. The second, the second <laughs> yep, the second day. So that'll be their evening. I'm sorry, can you clarify that again? So, what are the staffing requirements from the past for the overnight? There is none. There is none. No, so, we are taking care of leadership for the overnight. Yes. So, um, and again, you guys are more than welcome if you so want to be there. You're absolutely, um, you're absolutely encouraged if you would like. Or if you feel disgusted. Right, <laughs> right. If you know that you have a scout or two that may um, have some difficulties and will not do good overnight by themselves, please absolutely come. We don't want it to be a horrible experience. So, um, yeah. Um, oh, yes. Will there be an opportunity for communication if there is a scout Yes. We have radios. Yep. Yep. We will absolutely, we know what campsite they're in and all that good stuff. And so, yes, we will, we will definitely have everything covered and have you taken care of, I promise. <laughs> Um, so what we're uh, passing around now is a copy of the Weeble is Outbound. So this is um, this is going to be added to the leader guide. It's not yet on the leader guide, attached to the leader guide. So, um, but this is our um, our letter that will be included, um, and it will also have is the schedule on the back, Maggie? 
Okay, and then the schedule is on the back side for you as well. So it gives you an idea of when they would leave camp, when they would come back, and when they would have their overnight. Um, yeah, it's just going to be in the in the main meadow there, where we usually where we have the BB and archery ranges and just that open meadow. But we will have. Um, a telescope and all kinds of really cool stuff for them to stargaze and and because it's a optional thing we can send some of the weeblos and not all of them depending sure. on okay yeah on abilities absolutely yeah or we want them behavior <laughs> <laughs> there's that yeah <laughs> yes um, it seemed like we did um, horseback riding they still get to do it they get a so um, that will be part of their outing. Yeah. Yeah. All right, and then um, so those are those are the the couple really big changes that we um, that we've made this year. Um, most of the program is going to stay the same, um, with the exception of that for the weed lows. So. Um, and we have some great uh, stations this year. Of course, we're going to do the shooting stations, um, pioneering, fishing, woodcraft. Uh, we will have a Dutch oven cooking station, so they will um, so they will have uh, the ability to make like cornbread and that kind of stuff in the Dutch oven and have fun with it. So, yes, um, we have. How would that work with scouts that will have the parent there, but we have one autistic scout, and so if they need to turn in or go, like, I know this is just for the wee blows, but it's sure. saying 8.30, you know, meet a flagpole for five hours and all of that. Sure. They don't, once you hit a certain time, some of these scouts are not. Absolutely. No. Okay. Absolutely. And we'll yeah, accommodate that. Okay. Yep, yeah, absolutely. Okay. So if you need to, if you need to cut out, cut out. How work with... Sweeping arrangements, though. I mean, as far as with adults and with so, um, so sleeping arrangements. If you have a scout that you brought that's your child, you can sleep with them in the same attic. Okay. Um, if you are pairing them, right? You there's the two two year age limit difference, right? So they can't sleep with somebody if they are um, outside of a two year age difference. Um, and only boys can sleep together and girls can okay. sleep together. And how would that work? So if, like, at first we try to do the sleeping, the scouting, pairing them up and doing it with the kids, but after the first night, it's, oh, it's not going to work. Can we switch arrangements so that they can now sleep with that their parent? Or Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So if you have two scouts and then those two parents, granted they have to both be female or male, right? Mm -hmm. um, right. Unless they're married. Okay. Um, but, you know, if, if you're rooming with the other scout's parent, then all you have to do is separate the scouts and you go into your scouts okay. and makes, just yeah. change it around. Yeah, it's totally fine. Okay. Um, you guys as leaders will be in charge of making sure that YPT is being followed um, and okay. that you guys uh, are strictly enforcing it. So. Okay, I just want to make sure because we... We do have a lot of behaviors, and we have a lot of, that's why we have so many parents going. We have mm -hmm. nine adults and 14 scouts. So we're trying to, some of them we're really <laughs> unsure about, and we're right. trying to testing the waters with some of them. So yeah. it's like we want to It'll be an adventure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be yeah. with other scouts, but. Yeah. yeah. Sam, we've had that too um, in my pack. Um, so we let we let them have one night where they can be, you know, scouts and do their thing, and then the next night, you know, we just kind of change the sleeping arrangements around so that they're not overloading. So as long as we keep these followers. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Um, all right. So we're going to give you guys a little preview of our woodcraft project this year. Hey. <laughs> All right, so what's going to happen is when your scout checks in, 
When your scout checks in, all that they will get is the stay. It's going to be a stay, right? So at each station they go to, they're going to decorate it. And like hold these you can. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. But we make sure you you mark them so you know whose is whose. Okay. Um, and at each station, they are going to have the ability to decorate. The staff will have things that they can add to their stave. So it's their walking stick. And then when they get to the woodcraft station, they will add the head of the horse. And then we have there's a hole on top of the head. So this is where you will put the yarn, and your scouts will be able to pick which color mane they want the horses to have and we'll glue it in there and then they have a horse so <laughs> so for our weeblos um we wanted to do something special for them so they will also get a stave but they will not get the horse they're only gonna get the stave um we wanted to give them a memory box Okay, so the idea is is that they'll make this, and then you could put, um, you know, camp stuff in it, or their weeblos, um, neckerchief and slide and patches and all that good stuff, right? So, um, so you can add and do whatever you want, but this is going to be for them. And they also will have the option, like if the weeblos like really want a stick horse, they can buy the head and the trading post. <laughs> Um, yeah, but they'll and they'll also um, make the the reins and the the bridle and all that good stuff. If we can buy the head to all of that and everything, is that the same with like the shadow box stuff, like or kit or something like that? Because we're gonna have a lot of parents and kids that are gonna want. Yeah, like we'll have the kids available for purchase for sure. Yeah. All right. Um, so another thing is uh, Pony Express. So who's been to Beaver Creek before? Anybody who hasn't been to Beaver Creek? All right. So Pony Express um, is a really cool thing, mail system that we have at Butte Creek. Um, we actually deliver mail by horseback to Flag. Um, so you can... Um, Family members can can mail things to camp, um, or you can bring things from the family, uh, and we have outgoing mail every day. Um, and you specify if you want it to go a.m. or p.m. Um, and day one, two, or three. Oh, sorry. <laughs> day one, two, or three. Um, so obviously, day two or day one, we're only going to have evening. Um, Pony Express. Day three, we're only going to have morning Pony Express. Um, so, but you can um, set things, put things in bags. We'll have um, brown bag sacks that you guys can put things in. Um, put the scout name, the pack, um, and what day, and if you want AM or PM delivery. Uh, and we send that out on horseback, and it is delivered to your scout at Flag. So it's pretty fun. The kids enjoy it, and they get really super excited when the horse comes galloping down Main Street. Is, is mail like a letter or packages? They can, be, packages they can send stuff. packages. They can do a letter. Are there any they restriction can, on what, like, is candy and stuff like that? Candy's fine. Yeah. yeah. I know it's like, so, <laughs> by the many bears. <laughs> no, no, as long as they keep it uh, closed up and they don't open everything that they have in their box, um, just open as they eat it would be great. <laughs> yeah. Did you say Pony Express will not eat it breakfast on day two? Um, what you said? Sure. No. Um, so day one, they you're only going to have uh, evening Pony Express. Um, and day three, you'll only have morning Pony Express. Okay. But if you're close, they'll just uh, no, we'll still make sure that they get their Pony Express. Yeah. I would just encourage any parents, leaders that are going, try to make sure every kid gets something at Pony Express because it's like the coolest thing that I'm mm -hmm. going to sell through and I just made it that morning and slipped it in. And, uh, and if they don't get it and everyone else does, 
it feels bad. So yeah. try to include some if you can, and at least include or encourage parents to help you with that. Yeah. So it's a good. You can mail the pretty express to this address. Yes. If you have out of town people. Yep. If you have out of town people, just make sure that they mail it. You know, a week to two weeks before, so that we. Okay, yeah, so that we make sure that we get it because we definitely don't want your scout to miss it. Well, and then. You bring it the day of. Uh, or yeah, you bring it to camp and then you can go. Right, yeah, check he, was, in. he was talking about out of country. Mail. That's what I was asking. Like, if the parent is coming to camp, can that just be dropped off at the camp? Sure. This is that Absolutely. In the process. Yeah, we have a big mailbox that sits right outside the main office and you just stick it okay. in there. Um, if it's a letter or um, or you give it to us if it's a package and we just sort it out by day. Yes, ma'am. Is there a restriction on what can be brought as a character? Because it is a certain kind of thing. I just worry about, you know, usually the older scouts have been told you can't have the candy or you know, they have candy because once you open it, then <laughs> well, it's it's very true. We do have you know mini bears that like to come in <laughs> and scavenge through um, anything that's open, as long as it's sealed, it'll be okay. <laughs> um, do you mean raccoons? Uh, raccoons. Okay. Yes, yes, <laughs> raccoons. <laughs> Um, and they will come tear your place apart uh, if you have open food while you're gone. So <laughs> they, they, yeah, they have no boundaries. <laughs> so, um, so, so, yeah, just um, there really, there really isn't a limit, but make sure everything's sealed. Okay, don't send them like an open bag of cookies or something like that. Make sure that it's something that they can seal up. Huh? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Preferably not a whole bag of candy in one sitting, but <laughs> but yes. <laughs> yes. Sweet. So speaking of other things that you can get at camp, we do have our trading post, which is going to be like super stocked this year. We got a lot of stuff coming there. Like um, we have slime um, for the first time. So if your kids like slime, we're going to have it. No. No. Oh. Okay. They do. I do. I understand. Don't worry. They're pretty small. That is in hair and floor. Okay. Well, I didn't order. The kids will like that. The kids will love it. Um, but we do. So we um, just to keep in mind, kind of price points. Um, shirts we're going to be selling for around between ten and twelve dollars. So if you want a shirt. Make sure the kids bring at least that. We also do have hoodies, which are going to be going for around 30 They're really cute this year, too. Um, so if like that's something that you know your kids are going to be wanting, like make sure that they come with enough for that. And also so they can get like, candy and soda and all the, all the fun camp stuff um, so they don't miss out on that as well. Are you doing any water pops again? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're going to have a lot of water pops. <laughs> yeah. No, so we we do have a card reader, so yay, card readers making it easy. Uh, I will say though, Wi-Fi isn't always reliable, so make sure you do bring up some backup cash. Um, it's camp, Wi-Fi goes down, it happens, but we will try to accommodate as best as possible. Any questions? Sweet, so yeah. Yes. Um, so I take like three different medications. Are there lock boxes better if I bring one? So we have, um, we don't have log boxes that we can give out. Um, however, if you bring your medication to the med shack, we do keep them separated um, and in a in a locked cabinet. But if I bring something that is locked myself, I can keep that with me to keep the key. Mm -hmm, yep. And try and make sure that it's something that you can attach to something else. So, like if you have a cot. You know, or most of the Addies have a little um, have a little shelf in it. You know, and if you can bring something, there's uh, two by fours that go down that you can maybe hook it to and lock it to. You. So just something so it doesn't go running off. Oh yes, yes, that's hot rental. Yes, that's also. Or so we're getting all the kinks worked out now, but that will be um, available when you check in. Um, so yeah, good question. <laughs> and they will be uh, same as last year. They'll be twenty dollars uh, for a three-day session. 
So do the mini decks have nothing in them except the shelf? Yes. <laughs> yeah. There's no there's no bumps or anything. Like where they already have the yeah. So a no. cod is a very nice addition. <laughs> yes. Cod is very nice. I don't remember the cod last year. Does that so will two cots fit? Yes. Uh, okay. And you'll have probably yay amount of room in between. Okay. So it's it's not it's not bad at all. And you can fit your bag and stuff underneath them. Yeah. How many people can fit in the tents? Um, the Addies, you can fit three scouts and two adults. Not four, together. Four. <laughs> <laughs> four. Three scouts or two adults. Because <laughs> um, you definitely want to have enough room. If you put three scouts in there, um, there's not going to be walking room. Just so you know. <laughs> so they're going to be walking all over their stuff. Um, so it's best if, if we can try and keep it two, but if there's you know three boys or three girls that absolutely want to buddy together, they can. So when you assign camp space, is it just divide by two? Yes. So even for adults, it's assumed that they're married. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So um, so like last year, I know they asked that each pack bring a tent just in case. Um, and I would suggest the same thing for this year. It's always nice to have, you know, people sometimes don't like to share their space. And I get it. <laughs> um, so, you know, bring a tent. You can, you know, you can, most of the campsites will allow for a tent or two, um, as long as they're like a two person or three person tent. Um, we also have, again, the main field. Uh, we could find a place if you guys really needed to, you know, and we had a lot of people that wanted to pitch a tent, we could absolutely find spaces for you guys. Yes. So CPAPS is a special needs, so make sure that you get that to us because we will have to um, have you in the very lowest campsite where we could possibly run an extension code for you. Okay. Um, it would be best if you have a, a backup battery, something like that, that you could charge. Um, but if you don't, that's something that we can accommodate. But we have to know well ahead of time so we can get you get you where you need to be for that. So that if we just have a battery that works great and mm -hmm. we just want to recharge it, is, would there be a facility for that during the day? Yes. Yep. In the dining hall, there are plenty of outlets. Yep. What's the maximum size group for campsite? It depends on what campsite. <laughs> we have 24. So you would need a campsite that sleeps that with 12. Um, and I think we have like three of them, okay. three different sites. Together, yeah, okay. they would all be together. Okay. Yeah. Most of our um, most of the packs coming are usually just a den or two. Um, but if you have a very large group, we absolutely can. Wow. Congratulations. <laughs> um, no, we can absolutely accommodate you, don't worry. <laughs> All right, yes. Yes. Yes, so horseback riding, um, please make sure that you have long pants, um, preferably jeans. Um, if you don't have jeans, um, long pants of any kind will work, but um, but jeans are preferred. Um, and only the Weeblos will be actually riding. So everybody else does horsemanship kind of things. So they will be uh, learning how to take care of a horse. They will be learning how to, um, you know, how to groom a horse, um, how to walk around a horse, how to, um, you know how to approach them properly those kinds of things which are all very very important um for when you do work your way up to uh to being able to ride it's also a great introduction for our little buckaroos program which is ran um on i don't want to say off season because we really like it to be a year-round camp um but in the time that summer camp is not running uh, the little buckaroos program is really popular so 
is there kind of like a crash course to that for the Weeblos that have never been around a horse that you can ride? So the, the Wranglers out there are really, really good. Okay. Um, and they work really well with okay. all kids. Um, getting them used to the horse, helping them up on the horse. If they're not comfortable riding on their own, they will lead them around. Um, yeah, they'll make sure that they have a really great experience. Um, it may not be exactly the same experience as everybody else, which is totally okay, but they still get a really awesome experience. Okay, cool. Yeah. Every scale will have the opportunity to ride a horse. So is that not necessarily true? So they, they may have the opportunity to sit on a horse and be led around, like he was saying, but they won't be off on a trail ride. Oh, right. I just think he's going to ride a horse. Right. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, they will, but it's not going to be... No, that's Okay. <laughs> yeah. They'll be on a horse, but they won't necessarily be... On a horse ride. On a horse ride, yes. <laughs> and that's not something... So as long as there's not a band, a fire band, um, that's something that you guys will be allowed to do um, on night two. So, because that's the only night that we don't have a campfire. So, um, so you guys will be able to do that at your homestead time. Um, <laughs> so one thing that I would suggest bringing uh, with you is a day pack. Um, and I say that because I was one of those parents that had to hike up to um, Setting Sun six times in one day. Never made that mistake again. <laughs> um, so bring a, uh, a day pack with you, something that you can put your Scouts Class A uniform in, your Class A uniform in, because um, the only time that you're really required to wear those is flag. Um, so if you could uh, have something for that and water, um, water, 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 lots of water, please. <laughs> um, <laughs> Hotter than this Yeah, and sunscreen. Um, anything that you, you know, your, your essentials, basically. Yep. Any other questions? Yes. So the, the station breakout, my son's gone there several years in a row, and the first couple of years, our pack stayed as one group when they were going around the stations, and the last year, uh, I, I wasn't aware of it, and I switched it to where they were within ages. Uh -huh. A couple of kids that were like the lone wolf and the lone bear, and so they were in groups, and they didn't know any of the kids, and were kind of disappointed. Mm -hmm. Are we keeping with the pack this year, or are we going to so, we still do posses and we do age breakouts. Um, however, if you have uh, single scouts and they want to be with the rest of the group, um, let us know so that we can put them in. They're going to have to be in the youngest group. We're not going to put the younger scouts in an older group because they learn different things at every age, in every age bracket. So, um, so yes, we can absolutely do that. Just make sure you let us know so we can accommodate you. All right, All right it's hot. Thank it you guys hot. for coming. Thank you guys. Woo. Bring water this summer. It'll be hot. All